this story goes something like this. Once upon a time, there was a king. You might have heard it, but it's a nice story, so just go with it. And he, he had four wives, and he loved his fourth wife and adorned her with riches and with robes, and he treated her with the finest delicacies. He gave her nothing but the best. He also loved his third wife very much, and he always showed her off to the neighbouring kingdom. However, he feared that one day she would leave him for another. He also loved his second wife, and she was his confidant and was always kind and considerate and patient with him. Whenever the king faced a problem, he would confide in her, and she would help him get through difficult times. The king's first wife was a very loyal partner and had made great contributions to the maintaining the wealth of the kingdom. However, he did not love his first wife. Although she loved him deeply, he hardly ever noticed her. One day, the king fell ill and he knew that his time was short. He thought of his luxurious life and he wondered, I now have four wives with me, but when I die, I will be alone. Thus, he asked his fourth wife, I have loved you the most and endowed you with the finest clothing and showered you with great care. Now that I am dying, will you follow me and keep me company? No way, replied the fourth wife. And she walked away without another word. Her answer cut like a knife into his heart and the king was devastated. The sad king then asked his third wife, I have loved you all of my life and now that I am dying, will you follow me and keep me company? No, she replied, life's too good. When you die, I'm going to remarry. His heart sunk and he turned cold. Know the feeling? He then asked his second wife, I've always turned to you for help and you've always been there for me. When I die, will you follow me and keep me company? I'm sorry, I can't help you out this time, replied the second wife. At the most, I could send you to your grave. And her answer came like a bolt of lightning. The king was devastated again. He then heard a voice call out, I'll leave with you and follow you no matter where you go. And the king looked up, and there was the first wife. She was so skinny, and she was suffering from malnutrition and neglect. And greatly grieving, the king said, I should have taken better care of you when I had the chance. And in truth, we all have four wives. Our fourth wife is our body. No matter how much time and effort we lavish in making it look good, it will leave us when we die. Our third wife is our possessions, our status and our wealth. When we die, it will go to others. Our second wife are our friends and family. No matter how much they've been there for us, the furthest that you can stay by our side is up to the grave. And our first wife is our soul. Often neglected in the pursuit of wealth and power and pleasure of the world. However, our identity as a spirit, as a soul, is going to be maintained wherever we go, whatever bodies we acquire and whatever destination we achieve. So we should cultivate and strengthen this reality now. Nice story, huh? Makes sense of things, eh? There's one bit I don't like, though. It's the bit at the end where it says, our first wife is our soul. 
I don't like it because it implies that we have a soul somewhere. Where's your soul? Where, where is your soul? It implies that we're not that, but we have a soul. And this is why people go soul searching or they become soul mates or whatever, soul journey, whatever you want to call it. But my feeling is we are soul. We are spirit. Primarily, that's what we are. We're the driver, just like the driver that we saw of the plane, the, the, the pilot. And we have a body, which is our vehicle, just like the A380. And without it, we can't travel around. But primarily, we are soul, and secondary, we have the body. And this is a massive change. This is the biggest change we could possibly make because our whole world will then turn upside down. You'll see everything differently when you live in that reality. Every single thought, every single decision, everything you do will change when you come from this perspective of being soul first, body second. We're just travelers. We're just passing through for a short period of time. We come in with nothing and we go out with nothing, nothing physical. What we do gather along the way definitely goes with us, though, in the form of kind of like an imprint. So whatever we're doing now is influencing our next experience for sure. Even though we won't take the things with us physically, we'll take our habits with us. We'll take our preferences with us. We'll take these imprints with us and they will then manifest into our next experience. So that's good because it gives us responsibility.